welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge of the Yukon. Original air dates January 20th, 1951, and the title is Danger at Devil's Gorge. The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. The steamboat Yukon Star was just arriving at the Dawson City Landing. Among the crowd that waited on the wharf was a young mine owner named Hal Vaughn and his foreman, Ernie Joplin. The two men waited until the passengers had surged down the gangplank, and then they went aboard to speak to the skipper, Captain Corey. Hello there, Captain. Well, howdy, young fella. Have a good trip downriver? Yep, that we did. Good weather all the way. Good. How about that mining machinery I've been waiting for? You have it aboard? Yep, I got it stowed down the hold. It arrived at White Horse the day before we sailed. My golly, that sure is good news. Now we'll really be able to get things moving at the mine, eh, Ernie? Yeah, that's right, boss. Oh, uh... By the way, Captain, this is my foreman, Ernie Joplin. Howdy, Joplin. Glad to know you, Captain. You fellas sound as though you've been mighty anxious to get hold of this mining machinery. Oh, we sure have. With this machinery, we can put the mine on a paying basis. You mean your mine hasn't been paying off before this? Worse than that. I've been losing money. Things have been practically at a standstill all summer. And on top of that, I'm in debt to Clint Starbuck. Clint Starbuck? Say, I know that fella. He's a mining speculator, isn't he? Hey, yeah, that's right. And if I don't pay him off by next spring, he'll be able to take over the mine. But I reckon I won't have to worry about that now this machinery has arrived. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, how soon will you be able to unload the stuff? I'll get the bosun right in, busy on it right away. Reckon you fellas better come along and talk to him, too. You tell him where you want the crates piled. Good enough. Come on, Ernie. We'll attend to unloading and then talk to Jasper Howard about packing this stuff out to the mine. Right, boss. Jasper Howard was a freighter whose cabin was located on the outskirts of Dawson City. Hal Vaughn and Ernie Joplin went to call on him as soon as they had attended to the unloading of the crates of machinery. Well, Hal Vaughn, what are you doing here in Dawson City? How are you, Jasper? I'll tell you what I'm here for in just a minute. But uh, first, you know Ernie Joplin, don't you mind mind for him? Sure, sure, we've met before. Howdy. Now, uh, what's on your mind, Hal? Well, I have a job of hauling I want you to do for me. That is, if you're free to take on a job right now. Sure am. Just got back from a trip out to the creeks yesterday. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm looking for more work. Good, good. How many uh, horses and mules do you have in your string right now? Oh, about 20. Why? What is it you want me to haul for you? Some mining machinery. About half a dozen crates of it. We just finished unloading it off the boat from White Horse. Oh, Half a dozen crates, huh? How heavy are they? Plenty heavy. Some of the crates weigh, uh, oh, seven or eight hundred pounds, I imagine. But we can take the machinery apart and load the pieces separately and then assemble them later at the mine. Well, in that case, I reckon we can handle them easy enough. How soon do you want to leave? Tomorrow morning, if that suits you. Well, sure thing. I'll have my string of pack animals down at the dock at, say, um, seven o'clock in the morning. Good enough. Well, Ernie... We'll have the machinery installed and work going full blast inside of a week. And if Clint Starbuck was counting on taking over the mine, it looks like he's going to be badly disappointed. Yeah, sure looks that way, all right. On the evening of that same day, Ernie Joplin, the mine foreman, paid a visit to the office of Clint Starbuck, the man to whom Hal Vaughn was in debt. Well, how about it, Joplin? Did the mining machinery arrive? Yep. Yeah, that's right, Starbuck. Came in today on the Yukon Star. Crates have all been unloaded. So now young Vaughn thinks he's going to put the mine on a paying basis, eh? He'll do it, too. With his new equipment, he'll be able to get the ore out and pay off the dead he owes you. In that case, I reckon we'll have to take steps. What do you mean by that? 
I mean, we'll have to make sure Vaughn never gets a chance to use that machinery. Look, wait a minute. Before we go any farther, I want to know just what I'm going to get out of this deal. Now, don't worry about that, Joplin. You string along with me and you'll be well taken care of. Talk is cheap, Starbuck. All right. Let's say $1,000 cash is a down payment and later on a 10% interest in the mine after I take over. Uh, I reckon that's fair enough. Well, then... How does Vaughn figure on getting this machinery out to the mine? He's going to have it hauled out by a pack train. Who's handling the job? Oh, a freighter named Jasper Howler. Uh-huh. He's got a string of about 20 horses and mules. How soon are they leaving? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, huh? Let's see. In about three days from now, they ought to be passing through Devil's Gorge, yeah? Huh? So what? You know what the trail's like through Devil's Gorge, don't you? Sure, I've been over it often enough. Trail winds along a narrow ledge on one side of the gorge. That's right, and below that ledge there's a sheer drop of four or five hundred feet. So what are you getting at? Suppose a charge of blasting putter is planted somewhere up above that ledge. And then just as the pack train goes by, the charge explodes. Holy mackerel, it's start a landslide. That's right. And every critter in the pack train will either be crushed or swept over into the gorge below. Well, what about me? I'll be riding with that pack train myself. Use your head, stupid. Before they start up through the gorge, make some kind of an excuse so you can turn back. Pretend you left something behind at the last place you made camp. Yeah, yeah, I savvy. That's a good idea. But your plan still sounds kind of risky. What's risky about it? Well, suppose someone escapes and tells the Mounties that landslide wasn't accidental. Don't worry about that. If anyone does survive... I'll make sure they don't live long enough to go squawking to the redcoats. Well, you're going to need help to pull the thing off right. Yeah. And I know where to get help. Where? You ever hear tell of the Klondike kid? <laughs> Who hasn't? Police have got reward and notices posted all over the territory for him. Well, I know where him and that Siwash Pally is right now. They've done jobs for me before. And I reckon they'll do this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a smart operator, Starbuck. Sure, I'm smart. Now go on back to your hotel and leave the rest to me. Soon after Joplin had left his office, Clint Starbuck rode eastward out of town. Several hours later, he reined up in front of a ramshackle cabin. Oh, there, oh, oh. <laughs> what do you want? Come on, come on, open up, Johnny. It's me, Clint Starbuck. Oh. May not know you in dark. How uh, could you recognize me when you only had the door open a crack? May not like to take chances. Uh, the outlaw, known as the Klondike Kid, was seated at the table thumbing a greasy pack of cards. Well, howdy, Starbuck. Uh, Pull up a chair. Yeah, I'll do that. What brings you out here? Hey, uh, got another job for you and your Indian friend. This time I'll be working with you. What's the deal? Tomorrow morning, the uh, pack train's leaving Dawson City. They'll be heading east to a mine out on Malibu Creek. But us three are going to see to it they'll never get there. How do you figure on stopping them? You ever hear of a place called Devil's Gorge? Sure, I've been through it. All right. Now, here's my plan. About three days from now, the pack train will be passing through the gorge. The next morning, Jasper Howard's string of pack horses and mules were lined up along the waterfront at Dawson, while the mining machinery was disassembled and loaded on their backs. When the last crate had been emptied, Jasper spoke to Hal Vaughn. Is this the whole kit and caboodle? <laughs> it's enough, isn't it? Well, I reckon it'll do for the time being. We've hauled heavier loads than this. One good thing, we won't have to worry about trail robbers like we would if we were packing a load of gold dust. Yeah, you're right about that, Jasper. I don't imagine any road agents would have much use for this mining machinery. <laughs> Not unless they're operating a mine on the side. <laughs> Well, if you're all set, we may as well mount up and get started. Sure, let's go. All right, Sam, let's get these critters moving. <laughs> Steady down, Bess. Easy, boy. Yep. Steady. <laughs> get up there. Oh, all right, get along there. Get Come on, up. get along there. Get up there. Get up there. It was two days later that Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross rode through Devil's Gorge on their way back to Dawson City from a special patrol. The great dog, Yukon King, was trotting along at the sergeant's stirrup. A wonderful view from up here on this trail, huh, Sergeant? Providing you don't look straight down. What's the matter, Alex? 
Does high cliff walls bother you? Uh, let's say I don't like riding so close to the edge of nothing. <laughs> this trail isn't much more than a narrow ledge. It gets even narrower a little way farther along. Yeah, I know. And it's a sheer drop from here straight down to the floor of the gorge. How far do you suppose it is? 400 feet at least. Uh, no wonder they call it Devil's Gorge. Oh, 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 oh. All right, King, we'll catch up. We'd better ride single file from here on, Alex. Yeah, good idea. I'll take the lead. Get up, Luggy. Get around here. Easy. The two Mounties had passed through the gorge and had reached a point where the trail broadened and sloped downward when they noticed a lone horseman poised on the mountainside some distance ahead. I wonder what that fellow's up to, Sergeant. I don't know. Seems to be looking through binoculars. Now he's turning around. He must have heard our horses. Yes, he's seen us. That's funny. Look at him. He's galloping away. He may have some reason for avoiding the mounted police. Come on, Alex. We've got to check on him. Go, Get him. Get him. Spurring their horses to a gallop, the two Mounties took off after the fleeing rider. The latter had a long head start as he raced down the mountainside and headed into the foothills. But the Mounties had better horses. And finally, after a hard chase, they closed in on their quarry. Up in the name of the crown. Do not take me, Mounties. We only want to question you. I give you answer. He wasn't in trouble with the law before. He is now. I hate to shoot a man, but he's not giving me any choice. Oh. With a single shot, the sergeant rolled the fugitive in his saddle. Hold like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Holy smoke, sergeant. You know who this fellow is? Yes, he's called us Johnny, the partner of the Klondike kid. No wonder these red coats of ours scared him off. How about it? Is he dead? No, but that bullet didn't do him any good. It'd be luckier for him if he goes this way. Huh? There's a hangman's rope waiting for him in Dawson City. That's the same. We'll try to save him for the judge. Get a fire started, Alex. I'll try to take out this bullet. Right, Sergeant. Later, when the sergeant had removed the bullet and dressed his wound, the Indian oh. began to regain oh. consciousness. He's opening his eyes. Well, Johnny, do you feel strong enough to talk? Me gonna die. Not from your wound, if that's what you mean. Oh. What are you doing up there on the mountainside? Me not talk. Maybe you were looking for that partner of yours, is that it? Me not talk. Looks like we... May as well save our breath, Alex. Yeah, maybe so. But I'll bet that's the answer, Sergeant. He and his partner probably arranged a rendezvous. He was waiting for the kid to join him. Could be. From the lookout he was keeping, he was certainly expecting someone to show up on the trail. And who else but the Klondike kid? Well, there's one way to find out. What do you mean? Hit the trail ourselves. If someone is heading this way whom Johnny was expecting, we're bound to run into him. I reckon that makes sense. What about this fellow? We'll make a travois for him and hitch it to one of the horses. Yeah, good idea. I'll get some branches. A short time later, the two Mounties had constructed a travois out of two poles with cross pieces to support the body of the wounded man. The outlaw was wrapped in blankets and strapped to the travois with ropes. Then the poles were hitched to Cultus Johnny's own horse. How about it, Johnny? You comfortable? Ah, me all right. We'll take it easy and try not to shake you too much. Are you all set to hit the trail, Sergeant? All set, Alex. We'll lead Johnny's horse between us. Right. Steady, Buck. Easy now. Get up, boy. Get up. Get up. At the same time, Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross were starting out with their wounded prisoner. Clint Starbuck and the Klondike Kid were waiting at their camp in the hills, not far from the scene of the shooting. The kid squatted close to the ashes of their dead campfire, while Clint prowled back and forth, chewing on the butt of a cold cigar. Well, I'd sure like to know what those shots were about. Yeah, so would I. But if you're smart, you'll wait here and lie low till Johnny gets back. If he gets back. He'll huh? get back all right. For all we know, he's just taking a few pot shots at a rabbit. Sounded more like a gunfight to me. Who did he be having a gunfight with? Listen, Johnny's got more sense than to go looking for trouble while we're working this job for you. How do we know someone won't recognize him? He wouldn't let anyone get close enough to recognize him. Uh. Not with the whole Northwest mounted out looking for us the way they are. You heard what he said back at the cabin about not wanting to take any chances? Yeah, maybe so, but I still don't like it. Well, neither do I, but what are we going to do about it? If you're so all fired anxious to find out what happened, go out and see for yourself. All right, simmer down, simmer down. That Siwash pal of yours got himself into trouble. That's his tough luck. We'll wait here for an hour or so and see if he comes back. If not, we'll go out and scout for the pack train ourselves. Meanwhile, the pack train was approaching slowly along the trail, several miles from Devil's Gorge. Hal Vaughn was riding at the head of the column with Jasper Howard, the owner of the pack animals. These Yukon trails sure do get sloppy in summer. Well, this is Dad Red and Muskeg. I just hope he don't hit any more bad stretches like the last one we passed through. I'm afraid that's not the last soft spot between here and the mine. The foreman's riding up to talk to you. Ah, wonder what he's looking so worried about. What's wrong, Ernie? Oh, boy, oh, oh, boy, oh, stay there, oh. Now, go ahead, boss. I've 
I've lost my wallet. Lost your wallet? Yeah. I didn't discover it till it was gone till just now. Have much cash in it? Yeah, close to 100 bucks. All my personal papers, too. Yeah. What do you suppose happened to it? I must have left it back at that last spot where we made camp. Uh, would you mind if I rode back and tried to find it? Of course not. Go ahead. Think you can catch up with us again? Oh, sure. These critters are moving pretty slow. You'll soon be passing through Devil's Gorge. Oh, that's all right. I'll meet up with you on the other side. Good. You better get moving. Hope you find it all right. Oh, thanks, boss. Come on, Whitey. Come on, get up there. The pack train plodded steadily forward. It was about an hour later that Hal and Jasper sighted two Mounties riding toward them from the direction of the gorge. As the red-coated figures drew closer, Jasper exclaimed, Say, I know that Mountie on the right. So do I, Sergeant Preston. Hello there, Sergeant. Hello. 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 Say, what in thunder happened to that fellow in the Trevor? He's an outlaw named Calder Stoney. When we chased him, he put up a fight and was wounded. Uh Huh? Where did you run into him? On the mountain slope this side of the gorge. Siding along the trail through a pair of binoculars. You're looking for what? That's what the constable and I would like to know. You may have been on the lookout for your pack train. You mean waiting to waylay us? It's possible. What are you carrying? Nothing that a road agent would have any use for. It's a load of new machinery for my mine. Would anyone have any reason for wanting to interfere with this shipment? No, not that I know of. So... Oh, wait a minute. I suppose there is at that. Who? Clint Starbuck. Without this machinery, I wouldn't be able to pay off the debt I owe him. And in that case, he could take over the mine. It's a strong motive, especially for a shady operator like Starbuck. Did he know you were planning to install this machinery? I don't think so. At least I never told him. How many people knew you'd be packing the machinery to the mine at this time? Just myself and Jasper Howard here and my foreman, Ernie Joplin. I believe you've met him, haven't you? Yes. You riding with him? Well, he was, Sergeant, but he turned back about an hour or so ago. Turned back? Yeah. He, he discovered his wallet was missing. He figured he must have lost it back at the last place we made camp. Do you think he was telling the truth? <laughs> sure. As far as I know... It... Well, say, you're not suggesting that Ernie is mixed up in some kind of a plot against me. I don't know, Hal. But if there is a plot to waylay you at Devil's Gorge, where we met Cultus Johnny... Seems odd that Joplin should turn back just before you reach the gorge. Yeah, no, it's probably just a coincidence. Maybe you're right, Hal, but I think it would be wise not to take any chances. What do you mean, Sergeant? Would you mind holding up the pack train while I go and check on Joplin? But hang it all, Sergeant. That may delay us for three or four hours. I think Sergeant Preston is right, Hal. Won't hurt to play safe. Well, all right. We'll do as you say, Sergeant. Thanks. Uh, what about me, Sergeant? You stay here and guard Cultus Johnny while I ride on. Come on, King. <laughs> all right, Blackie. Get up there. <laughs> After leaving the pack train, Sergeant Preston rode forward at a good speed. Less than an hour later, he came on Ernie Joplin resting beside the trail with his horse tethered to a tree. At sight of the Mountie, Joplin started up with a guilty look on his face. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Oh, howdy, Sergeant Preston. Howdy, boy. What's the idea, Joplin? I thought you were supposed to be riding back to look for your wallet. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right, but I... I stopped to rest. You must have spent most of your time resting since you left the pack train. My horse showed signs of going lame. You're quite sure you lost your wallet? Well, sure, I'm sure. What do you mean? Any objection if I make a search right now? Now, see, here's... Stand still, Joplin. Watch him, King. After searching Joplin, the sergeant looked in his saddlebag and promptly found the missing wallet. Well, well, well. So this is where you lost your wallet. By thunder, so that's what happened to it. I, I swear I forgot all about putting it in there. Never mind the act, Joplin. If you know what's good for you, you'll start talking right now. Start talking? I don't know what you mean. Why did you make an excuse to separate from the pack train? It was no excuse. Don't lie. You told Hal Vaughn you were going to ride back to look for your wallet. Instead, I find you resting here beside the trail with your wallet and your saddlebag. I tell you, I forgot all about putting it in there. Huh? I suppose it was purely coincidence that you turned back just before the pack train approached Devil's Gorge. Devil's Gorge? What's that got to do with it? A short while ago, Constable Ross and I captured an outlaw named Cultus Johnny near the gorge. He was studying the trail through binoculars. Could be that he was waiting to waylay the pack train. Maybe so. Uh, How would I know what he was doing? In other words, you're not talking? How can I talk when I've got nothing to say? All right, Joplin, get on your horse. Uh, All (laughs) right, all right. (laughs) Where are you taking me? We're going back to join the pack train. 
We'll see if your horse shows any more signs of going lame. Now, go on, get moving. Get up there. Come, Come on, Lucky, get up there. When the sergeant and Ernie Joplin arrived back at the spot where the pack train had halted, Hal Vaughn greeted them in surprise. Oh, Lucky, who's pretty well up? You're back sooner than I expected, sergeant. I didn't have far to go. What do you mean? Joplin only rode a little way after he left you. Found him sitting beside the trail with his horse tied to a tree. What's that? What about the wallet? I found the wallet in his saddlebag. Say, for Pete's sake, Ernie, what's this all about? Oh, it, it was a mistake, boss. I, I forgot what I'd done with my wallet. I, I was sure I'd lost. Well, how come you were just waiting around beside the trail? They claimed his horse showed signs of going lame. But there was no indication of that on the way back here. I thunder, Ernie, if this is some kind of a scheme... Oh, now, I'm... hold on, boss. Don't go flying off the handle. This mountain has got nothing against me. I don't even know what he's driving at. Dang it all, Sergeant. I don't know what to think. Just the same, Hal. I think Constable Ross and I better escort your pack train through Devil's Gorge. Well, I certainly won't object. But the whole thing still doesn't make sense to me. What do you think can happen to us? I don't know any more than you do, Hal. But Joplin here had some good reason for not wanting to accompany you through the gorge. I'd sure like to know whether your suspicions are correct. Oh, now look, boss. You don't trust me. Maybe I'd better quit working for you right now. In fact, I think that's just what I'll do. Sorry, Joplin, but you're not quitting just yet. What do you mean by that? When the pack train travels through the gorge, you're coming with us, and you're going to be riding in the lead. Oh, wait a minute. You can't force me to go anywhere. I'm not under arrest. That can be arranged if necessary. But one way or another, you're coming with us. A short time later that afternoon, two men crouched on the rocky slope high above the trail through Devil's Gorge. They were watching the pack train as it slowly approached in the distance. One of the men was Clint Starbuck. And the other was the outlaw known as the Klondike Kid. That must be Vaughn's pack train, all right. If we had those binoculars, I lent that Siwash pot of yours. We could tell for sure. Well, we haven't, so quit your gripe. Is the glass of butter all planted? Yeah, Johnny and I fixed it this morning just like you told us to. I'd sure like to know what happened to that Indian. Yeah, whatever happened to him, it must have had something to do with those shots we heard while we were waiting back at the camp. Well, it don't make much difference. I reckon we can handle this job between us. Now, wait a minute. Just how are we going to work it? You better go over it again so as I'll be sure I got it all clear. All right. We'll wait till the packed train gets to the point where the trail tapers down to the narrow ledge. Mm-hmm. Then we'll light the fuse and make a run for it. By the time the powder goes off, we'll be out of the danger zone. And the pack train will be right square in the path of the landslide. Gotcha. Think we can make our getaway without them spotting us? Sure we can. They'll be watching their step along that ledge, not looking up the slope. Yeah, I guess you're right. These rocks and boulders give us plenty of cover. And even if they do spot us, so what? They won't savvy what we're up to. At least not until it's too late to do any good. (laughs) As the pack train approached Devil's Gorge and headed up the trail along one side of the chasm, Ernie Joplin's mind was working frantically. He was in a desperate situation. He tried to weigh the odds against him. There was a chance Clint Starbuck wouldn't go through with the scheme now that cultist Johnny had been captured. Or maybe he would call it off when he saw who was riding at the head of the column. Joplin knew that if he broke down and told the truth to Sergeant Preston, he would be facing a long jail sentence. And yet, if he refused to talk and kept on going, he would be risking a horrible death. What's the matter, Joplin? You're looking pale. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? Well, maybe I'm wrong. Meanwhile, Clint Starbuck and the Klondike Kid were watching tensely from their place of concealment higher up the slope. The pack train had almost reached the point where the trail became a narrow ledge. Suddenly, Clint spoke. Holy Michael. What's the matter? That guy in the lead, right beside the money. It's only Joplin. I told you those red coats meant trouble. Maybe Joplin squealed out. Don't be stupid. Do you suppose they'd be bringing that pack train up here if they knew what we planned to do? Yeah, maybe not, but your plan's gone wrong somewhere. Yes, it's gone wrong as far as Joplin's concerned, that's for sure. All right, what are you going to do? What are you supposing I'm going to do? As soon as they come a little closer, I'm going to light the fuse. At that instant, Sergeant Preston was saying to Ernie Joplin... All right, Joplin, move up into the lead. We'll have to ride single file from now on. No, no, I can't do it. Stop the horses. Stop it. Oh, well, are you ready to talk? Uh, yeah, I'll talk. Clint Starbuck and the Klondike Kid, they're up there on the slope somewhere. They're going to touch off a charge of blasting powder, start a landslide, and kill us. Holy mackerel, what are we going to do, Sergeant? Get the horses turned around. Hal, you're carrying a gun. Right. 
Keep Joplin covered. You bet, Sergeant. In the meantime, the constable and I are going to dismount and go up that slope. I'll try to find Starbuck and the Klondike kids. Steady, Buck. Easy now. Come on, Alex. Right, Sergeant. All right, Joplin. Get get Meanwhile, the crooks were watching everything that happened. They were crouched behind a group of boulders some distance up the slope at the spot where the blasting powder had been planted to start the landslide. Clint Starbuck was just about to light the long, slow-burning fuse when he realized that the pack train had stopped too far out of range for the explosion to be effective. Hey, look at those mounties. They're coming up the slope. I've got eyes, stupid. Well, what are we going to do now? Lie low and get our guns ready. If they spot us, we'll get them down. It was slow going for the two mounties as they picked their way up the steep, rocky slope. King was at his master's side with every sense alert. We're going to make mighty good targets for those two, Sergeant. Yes, I know. When they start shooting, we'll just have to hit the dirt fast. The mountain side's mighty big. Plenty of rocks for them to hide behind. Wish we had some general idea of their position. There's one thing in our favor. What's that? The breeze is blowing down the slope toward us. King should be able to pick up their scent. It looks as though he's picked up a scent already. Yes, no doubt about it. Where are they, fella? As if in answer to his master's question, King suddenly charged forward. <laughs> At that moment, as the sergeant pulled out his revolver, he saw the sudden glint of a gun barrel. Bunting! You got one of them, sergeant. Never mind that. Take cover. As the Mounties dived behind the nearest rocks, an answering shot rang out, and then another. The Mounties returned the fire. At the sergeant's command, King, too, had taken cover. And now, as the shooting continued, he darted away out of line of fire. It looked as though he were frightened. But actually, as soon as he was far enough away from the scene of action, he began moving in a wide circle so as to close in on the enemy from the rear. Between shots, the two Mounties kept an eye on his movements. Hey, look at King, Sergeant. Yes, he knows what to do. What's the idea? You want to try to work around, come up behind them? That's right. All he's doing that will keep their attention focused this way with our guns. The great dog moved as silently as a shadow from rock to rock. Meanwhile, the two Mounties were keeping up a steady fire. Several minutes later, they heard a ferocious snarl in the distance, followed by a yell of surprise. Help, help me! Get this gun away from me! That's what we've been waiting for, Alex. Come on, the fight's over. The two Mounties jumped up and ran toward the spot where the crooks had been concealed. As they arrived on the scene, they saw Clint Starbuck struggling in terror to get away from King. A few feet away, the Klondike kid lay sprawled out motionless on the ground. Come off, his dog! Come up before he kills me! He won't hurt you. You should best lie still while we pick up these guns. All right, King, on guard. Good work, boy. Happy. I'd rather fight a timber wolf than face that dog of yours. You haven't been hurt. Get up on your feet. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. What about the other one, Alex? Is he dead? No, just wounded, Sergeant. He'll live to stand trial. Well, King boy, with your help, we've captured the two men and we're going to destroy the pack train. <laughs> After you've handcuffed Starbuck, Alex, I'll attend to the other fellow's wound. Once they're behind bars, this case will be closed. <laughs> And now, at a rear table in a cafe in Dawson, two men speak in low tones. Wally, that claim Casson let us in on is paying off plenty. I know a way we could get to own the whole thing. Oh, what's on your mind, Dell? Casson cheated Sam Perry out of his half. Perry knocked Casson down here in front of everybody and made threatening remarks. Yeah, I know that. Casson's going out the trail to Fox Run. If he's found murdered, Perry will get the blame. We'll follow Casson. Falling snow will cover our tracks, and Perry will be jailed as the killer. The two men, Wally and Dell, have planned the murder, knowing someone else will be blamed. When Sergeant Preston and the great dog Yukon King set out to trail the man who is thought to be the killer, Preston may find that his own life is in the hands of a desperate fugitive. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure next Saturday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Saturday and Sunday, starting January 27th. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until next Saturday. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.